Okay, this is a second video about forecasting, and I'm going to, I haven't got anything really in here, but I'm going to uh, uh, put some, I'll put a lesson set for the forecasting. Okay, and again, I didn't really think a video was necessary here, uh, but the, I looked at the website, uh, websites, and I couldn't really find anything good. Okay, and here's where I left off. I said, okay, what we did is we did some analysis and we tried to, uh oh, we tried to replicate the Excel forecast. And unfortunately, I'm getting some uh, alphas that are above one. And I'm, I'm going to look at, uh, well, that's okay. Now, the question is how do these forecasts diverge? How do these forecasts go up? Now, if you make a prediction error, and if uh, I'm just kind of uh, trying to replicate things again, now, if you look at some of the literature, here's what they say. They said, okay, take the E, that's the, fork, that's the square root, the square of the forecast error, and go, that's just taking an average. <laughs> Why can't they just say average? And you take the average of the, that's the, 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 the uh, sum of squares, because we sum it, that's the sum of squares, sorry. And then they say, okay, well, uh, uh, take this average, and here it is, and take the square root of that, and it should be the square root, I'm just missing something, it should be the square root of the, the, the sum, uh, the average. It's just the square root of the standard deviation. And here's all you need. My point is all you need is a standard deviation. They have something called a normal, standard normal distribution that you should have learned in college, I'm sure. And then if we put in Excel norm distribution or norm uh, standard dev distribution, if you go up one and down one, it gives you the probability. And then if you take the difference in that probability, it gives you 68, your famous 68%. 68% is between one and minus one. 68% between one and minus one. And then if you put 1.96, your famous 1.96, and put that in the standard normal distribution, you get the 95, you get the famous 95%. So if you have a standard deviation, if the standard deviation is one, and you want to figure out how much your variable can go up or down, you take 1.96 times the standard deviation. Now if we go here, they, in the Excel, they have a con something called a confidence range. They say ETS, and they put the confidence interval, and you put, I put 95%. You can leave it out, and it gives you a kind of default number of 95%. And they say take the values and take the years, and if it's quarters, give me a, a, a confidence range. And this confidence range is what we qu qu question. And then you can do the same thing. Oh, no! It. We can do the same thing and with the next period and the next period. Ah, I had a mistake. What a shock. Okay. Okay. And we can say, well, okay, the standard deviation increases over time. How much does it increase over time? Here, it went up by... 1.54 and 1.6, and let's take some other ones, okay? Chile increased by 1.35 and 1.6, and I think the standard deviation is increasing more if you've got a higher alpha and probably also if you've got a higher beta. So that's the first thing we can observe, and it's also increasing more if you've got, so this is a low one, uh, and it's, uh, but the beta is really not that low. The alpha isn't that low. So the increase, the standard deviation went up by 35% in 
in the first year and 62% in the second year. Now, the, the first, to get the standard deviation, you can basically take the mean squared error and multiply the mean squared, and no, the root of the mean squared, the square root. You take that square root here, uh, this, oops, this one, and you multiply it by 1.96 up here. And it gives you 38. Ah, oh, it didn't give me very good. I did it with the mean square. Let's try a different one. Hmm, Burkina Faso. Here, it's 10. It's not giving me exactly. I don't know exactly what they did. The mean average error, it's, it, it, if you do it with the mean average error, it's close, but not exact. That's kind of the deviation. And then the question is, how to get these higher ones. This, kind, this one, with a low alpha, it didn't go up much. And here's the formula. Now, I can't replicate exactly this. I, maybe I'm going to do that later, but I'm going to stop here because I want to answer some of these questions. If you go to this uh, formula that some I found on the Internet, they, they say, okay, basically the formula is... We take, oh God, look at this. You take the alpha and you sum up all the alpha and you square it and you sum up the last one. So as the forecast, this M is the forecast error. As you go further in the future, somehow you get a bigger forecast error. And if you take this divided by that, now that's just alpha. So if you take this as 0.3, the forecast error increases as a function of alpha. That's the first thing we can see. And then they also account for beta, but they do beta plus one times some kind of damping factor. Oh, my gosh. So if we just do alpha, let's just do alpha right now. So if we have, you know, uh, uh, and then this is the ratio. So I take this ratio, okay? So if alpha is 0.5, the forecast error goes up. If alpha is 0.2, it's not very high. If alpha is 0, it doesn't go up. Alpha is 0.3. And up here, when we did this, I'm not explaining everything, and I'll finish this maybe another time. This alpha is only 0.126, and, and the forecast uh, confidence interval is not going up much. Now let's Argentina. The alpha is 0.9, and the forecast error goes up by a lot more. And it's supposed to be a function of beta, but beta's all screwed up here. This has an increase. There's an increasing trend. Can't you see that? And if I put Argentina, I'm trying to solve this now. I'm worried about this a little bit. Uh, then I get 0.24 for alpha and 0.06 when I replicate it. And <laughs> it's completely different meaning that these forecast errors can't be, can't be right. And not only that, my mean squared error is different too. And there, there's the forecast. I don't know. Does it look like that? Oh, this is 8,000. Hmm. If I put, remember, if I put Excel statistics in, then that's what it looks like. And I know it doesn't look like that. Okay, let's one more time. Let's go up to another one. Australia. Okay, it says this one, the alpha is only 0.26 and there's no beta. But again, I, I, I'm i going to press solve. I hope, oh, come on, please. Ah, oh, there it goes. Just about right, but the alpha is more than above, more than one. So we get a completely different uh, uh, forecast. I've got to see, uh, maybe I have to constrain the alpha to be be one, but the beta clearly is not 0 0.01. It's clearly 0 0.01, and you can see how they do the variance. So, here's the bottom line for my friend Shakira and everybody else. I would do these by hand. I would go here and do the exponential smoothing yourself, if you like that. And the double exponential smoothing, it sounds fancy, and it's probably pretty good. And you can do that, and then perhaps you can get some rough estimate of how they really compute these forecast errors. All right? And that's that. That's not very... I'm sorry I didn't really answer any questions.